Okay, howdy everyone. So this is just a video to uh, walk through the construction of the geometric realization of a specific example, because <clears throat> the recipe is slightly involved. I mean, this here is, is sort of the, the tricky part, the general sort of inductive step of, of, of constructing the next uh, stage. Um, and so it's really important to sort of see how, um, how that actually works. Um, you start off with something easy, a bunch of points, a discrete space, and then suddenly you just get blasted with this in enormous construction. So this here, this is a slightly simpler version of what I, I wrote in the, in the lecture notes, in the actual lecture. Um, it's the same thing. And the only important bit is that this map um, phi n is separated out from the rest of the stuff up here. So that when we build a new, a new vertical map phi n plus one, it's sort of the ingredient for the next stage where we can stick a bit on here and some stuff up here and do another push. -up. You'll see how it works. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do, I mean, uh, partial delta three, this delta set here, whoop, right up in the corner, um, is only two dimensional. So there's only a few stages. We start out with the, the zero dimensional bit and the one dimensional bit, and then the two dimensional bit, and then we're done. And I hope that's enough to sort of give you an idea of how it works, because I can always draw all these things. Um, and so for higher dimensional things, it's there's more steps, but it's philosophically it's the same thing, just with higher dimensional topological simplicities being glued in. Um, and then in the infinite dimensional case, uh, you just sort of continue this forever and then take the union over all the things um, <clears throat> and uh, give it the final topology. So uh, this is our general uh, general. Um, push out, and I will add that the starting step all the way down here, and sort of a zero dimensional bit, is defined to be um, just precisely uh, x zero, so x here is the general delta set, so general delta set, I start with a discrete topology. Okay. And from this, then we start our induction. Um, and I should say maybe phi, uh, phi zero, I can take to be the identity on X zero or, or, or near enough because um, this, this Cartesian product here, this product topology, X zero has a discrete topology, delta zero is a single point. And so this is up to isomorphism, um, just uh, X zero itself with, with the discrete topology. Okay, so maybe this. All right, maybe I will switch over to this board. Okay, and I won't need this little, any line anymore? Let's, let's just keep going there again. All right. <clears throat> so what do we do? So for and I'm not going to necessarily be like super pedantic about notation because I'm going to draw pictures and you can see what's going on. Okay. So I know that uh, I will just say that the, the zero simplices here. The set is. 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's a, a four point space with a discrete topology. So I can draw it as just, um, there we go. That's, that's uh, not very visible. So let's make the dots bigger. That's, that's my, this is geometric realization of delta 3 at dimension 0. All right, so now, um, what do I need? I'm going to start sort of small and then, and then build it up and hopefully not run out of space. So I should have um, S than or equal to zero. My phi zero, I'm just going to take to be the identity. Um, well, it's a nice, it's, it's a nice isomorphism or whatever. Um, this is, I want to think of this. So that's x zero, uh, the delta uh, 
uh, zero is, is nothing. And then this map, um, n is zero. So I have two things here. So I equals zero to one. Now this is x1. This is the edges in my delta set times delta zero. But now I'll just pop it in there because it, um, I need it for what comes next. And what is this? There are two maps here. There's a map on the zero i equals zero uh, component and a map on the i equals one component. And they are um, uh, d plus di. That should be a times. That should be a times. Um, yeah, and so basically this is going to be a d yeah, di times, well, nothing really. So this just goes away. So let me just be a little bit slack and write d0 and d1 are the two maps out of the two components. So on the i equals zero component, it takes an edge in the delta set and returns its d, d0 of it. So it's the target of the directed edge. And on the one component, it takes the, the, the d1 of that, which is the source of it. Now map over here. Now here I should have x1, so that doesn't go up. But now the dimension here of the topological thing goes up. So now this is an edge. Um, and there's two of these, and they are, uh, well, it's identity times partial zero, identity times partial one, where these partial maps are the inclusions of the faces into the, the topological syntax. So let's draw a picture. So this has got four dots. And now this has got one edge, one actual topological edge, you know, an, an interval for each uh, element of this set x1. Uh, and we know what that looks like because they are the edges. And there's six of them, the edges of the tetrahedron. Um, okay. So I'm going to make myself a little bit of space up here to say this is one, two, three, three, four. That's it off. All right. And so what's what's happening here? What does this look like? This looks like a bunch of points, but now indexed by the, the edges, but then there's double copies. So what it's doing is it's taking um, for each edge here, I have a vertex that I I have two, right? I have one for the, the sort of the, the source end, one for the target end. Um, and I'll draw some little blobs around these to demar demarcate them. I want to think of them as so each circle here corresponds to um, uh, a single edge here, but for each edge, there's two copies because I've taken the disjoint union. Um, and so, so I've got two, two dots, so the dots then correspond to the actual topological points here. And then what happens is the vertical map assigns um, each dot to what it should be. So this is like too many vertices, right? This is more vertices than the, the, the tetrahedron has. And really I've only got four, four vertices, four dots. And so um, for instance, this dot and this dot and uh, it should be this dot. Uh, they correspond to this endpoint here, here, and here. So this function actually takes this dot and this dot and this dot and includes them into these these specific uh, intervals. It takes these three. Uh, this vertical function takes these three dots and assigns them to the corresponding vertex 
in the tetra, if we think of the, the zero scales with the tetrahedron. So this we get mapped to that. And similarly, you can go through um, and look at you know this point and this point and this point. So horizontally, they get included into here, here, and here, and the disjoint union of these intervals, the vertical map sends them down to the corresponding single correct copy down there. Okay, so that's vaguely what these maps do. <coughs> and so uh, maps get mapped to sort of, this is one, two, uh, two, Three, this is star one goes there, star two goes there, star three goes there. These are actual topological things now. This is not just combinatorics. All right, and so now we need to do the push out. And so what does is, what is the push out do? It takes this set or this space and this space, takes their disjoint union and then puts an equivalence relation on them and collapses it together and gives it the quotient topology. So it's the disjoint union of this and this, but I'm identifying, for instance, this point with, so this point here comes from these various points with a map labeled with a star. It gets mapped to, Sorry, these maps with points labeled by a star get mapped to these points labeled with a star. And so all these three points are identified, the end points of these intervals are identified with this single point here. So that becomes so that becomes this point here. All these three, I'm just sort of these star ones get back down to this single point here. And you can play the same game. So you have no, this edge gets to an edge, but this endpoint corresponds to comes from here over here, and this one gets mapped down to uh, this one down here, and that gets identified with that edge. So that when all these edges get glued via their endpoints to your pre-existing vertices to give us the one skeleton. So now this is this is one dimensional. This is zero dimensional. Okay. So it's kind of convoluted because you're doing bookkeeping because you can't see this in high dimensions. Um, okay, so now we need to go up another dimension. And now our new sort of starting bottom left corner will be this, and the new top right corner will be triangles. So if I had more space, I could just keep growing the diagram without sort of having the actual pictures here, but we got to deal with space issues. Okay, so now we have. It's more interesting because our map, this is our map by one, x1, this is by one, is inductive construction. So now we have a map here which takes now n is one, so this is from zero to uh, one plus one, so this is two, so I have three components. Um, now this goes up, this is now tri counting the triangles. Now this becomes X2 and the actual topological triangles. Okay, so what's going on here? I mean, this is the, maybe the same picture. Uh, a distinct lack of sensible colors. Uh, use blue, we just have to live with it. Um, <clears throat> let's draw it again. Here's our sort of one dimensional skeleton of the topological tetrahedron. Uh, <clears throat> so up here, <clears throat> maybe I'll start over here. I'll say I've got, right, I've got a bunch of actual topological triangles indexed by the set of two simplices. And what does that look like? Uh, let's see if I can draw them. 
look roughly in their correct orientations. Okay, so here's three triangles. So one per two simplex. And it, mm, <clears throat> over here, I have uh, not just uh, an edge per two simplex, but then I have to count how many I have. Like, so for instance, this triangle here, it has three edges. So the X2, right, this, the, the, the point in X2 over here, which indexes this one, has an edge attached to it, but it has three edges because I'm, I'm counting um, using the face maps here. So this is, so this is a big disjoint union of intervals. And like this, 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 and like this. Okay, so we're again, these blue circles correspond to a single thing over here. Okay, now what the vertical map does is, um, so here I have abstract like this, this map phi zero, I didn't really talk about because it was, it was nothing interesting. But here I have an interesting middle step. Here I have this set here of the disjoint union of all the topological edges. And so what it does, so this, this map is, is this map here, is the one that takes the, the edges and gloms them all together so their vertices actually, you know, they're actually glued together. Um, now this map from here to here is the one that takes for instance, um, this edge and this edge, which should correspond to the same edge down here, double star, a map down to here. And then that maps down to here. And similarly, so, um, you know, this edge here and this edge here will get mapped to both get mapped to this edge here and then get maps to this edge here. And if you go, what is the map this way? Well, it takes an edge and includes it into the relevant triangle. So um, this one will get mapped into this triangle. Like it's an actual topological simplex. So like this. This interval sits inside this triangle, sitting inside like R three, and this one gets mapped to here. And so then, when you do the push out, uh, this is the last step because this is only two dimensional. So this here is J zero. So this map J zero includes just the, the vertices into this sort of one dimensional skeleton. Um, and then my next map, J1, is going to include this one dimensional skeleton into the actual boundary of the tetrahedron. So, what is going on? Right, it's a dis I have to take the disjoint union of uh, these triangles and this sort of one dimensional frame. And so then I take an edge, for instance, this edge, and I know that it comes from here, and this edge maps down to here. So, I'm gluing this edge onto this edge in the actual topological uh, skeleton here. And similarly, this edge comes from here, and this also maps to this same edge. So they, they, they're, um, they're identified in the pushout. And you go through the other edges of this triangle, here and here, they map down to the other edges of the frame, which are the boundary of that face. So it actually glues this triangle, color these in. This triangle get glued into the sort of wireframe in the correct position with all the faces being where they should be. And you keep going, and it's a similar thing for all the other faces. And the J1 includes this sort of wireframe topological thing into this uh, two dimensional surface. Okay, and at this point, this construction stops because X3 is empty 
And so there are no more steps to do. Um, in general, it's it's rinse and repeat. You get a you get the if you had more, you'd say the next step is oh, I have this, and it would be some more complicated thing, triangulated, uh, you know, foam or surface or whatever. And then you take the disjoint union of that with a bunch of solid tetrahedra that are indexed by x3. I'm writing x here. X is this is x. Anyway. <coughs> Quicker to write x than uh, partial down three. It's a little bit cleaner. Um, yeah, and then you would have some bookkeeping which says, okay, I can think about all the various um, faces of the topological three simplex. Where should they map to down inside my, my one dimensional down skeleton? And then I'll do the push out, which takes a disjoint union and then glues in the, the sort of the next higher dimensional uh, topological simplex where the bookkeeping says all its faces should go to the lower dimensional things. Anyway, so that's that's the general pattern. Um, so this gets used a lot in sort of inductive arguments done by dimension. Um, it turns out you can prove that, well, I mean, from this example, uh, this is a topological space, this is a topological space, this is a topological space. These are actually have injective functions and even stronger than subspaces, which uh, I'm not going to prove. I mean, if we knew that this top map was uh, uh, injective, we'd get that the bottom map is injective, um, but there's a little bit more work that you have to do uh, to get that. So just, just a heads up that this, this being injective is kind of a, is a, general, um, is a general pattern and even better, it's a subspace. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that's a geometric realization of a, of a delta set in the low dimension example.